It's not too often that I get political with my movie reviews, but today the movie's content and the subject matter demands me to get political. Because the movie's a politically based firecracker, historical epic of the gay pride movement. And we just had Pride here in Las Vegas about a, uh, last weekend, and it's been going on for many years, and Pride parades have been going on since 1970, and I, claiming ignorance, I thought that gay pride was, you know, people got together, gay people got together and started demanding better treatment, changing the laws, everything, you know, the, another part of the civil rights movement, and it just over time it evolved. Uh, but after watching Stonewall, that was the catalyst. That is where Pride began, which I had no idea. And I've heard of Stonewall historically. Uh, there was a riot at uh, Christie Street in New York City where a lot of the uh, um, the gay population was living and, you know, it was kind of a seedy part of town, like New York was in 1970. And, uh, just eventually at this watering hole run by the mob, the Stonewall Bar, uh, it was reflecting the laws of the time. Real quick, a little background. Uh, you couldn't serve homosexuals alcohol. Uh, you couldn't, uh, there was all these ridiculous laws going on. And they, they were talking uh, how it was diagnosed as a mental illness. They used shock therapy. I mean, I can't imagine being gay, you know, be prior to 1970. I mean, I just can't imagine, or 1980, I should say. So Stonewall was the catalyst where gay, where gay pride began. That was the epicenter of where it happened with the riots storming Stonewall and trashing the place. And it's a lot more than that. The, the movie follows uh, Danny, this farm boy from, uh, uh, not in, yeah, he's Indiana. He's from Indiana. Uh, he's outed, you know, a small town. Can you imagine that? A small town in the late 60s. And uh, he's messing around with the quarterback <laughs> and the high school team, and they get caught, and his dad's the coach. So you can imagine just the intolerance going on in that town, you know, a Christian community. And so he goes to New York, and he meets up with a bunch of street hustlers, uh, and particularly one played by uh, Johnny Bocamp, which is Bochamp. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, he plays Ray amazing performance by this guy. I mean, just out of left field, where did this guy come from? Watch, watch nomination time. This guy's that good. Uh, he befriends him, uh, shows him the workings of the street. He's got to hustle. He's got to do things. He's, I mean, it breaks your heart to see what this poor kid from you know, Indiana has to do to survive. And he keeps trying to call home, and he's, he's got close to his little sister and come up with his, some up with his mother. So it's about him surviving in New York and being at the right place at the right time. And the, the bunch of the hustlers that he hangs out with, they're all based on true people. Uh, they're all based on people in the neighborhood that started this incredible civil rights movement of its own. So the movie is, is really hard to watch at times in terms of its graphic, uh, in terms of uh, the drug use, uh, the flop houses, the sexual scenes. It, it hits you over the head. It really does. It doesn't pull any punches. So this is definitely not a movie for the faint of heart or someone with delicate sensibilities, but it's an important piece of historical representation. And uh, so eventually, Stonewall is run by the mob. The mob runs all these gay bars in New York because it's illegal to serve alcohol to homosexuals. So they're kind of looking the other way. They're paying off, paying off the police department. And they're absolutely making all this money. But again, they are also pimping out a lot of the young boys that show up. You know, those, the, the stereotype that shows up like Danny off of the bus from somewhere trying to make their fame and fortune or trying to find a place to be accepted. And uh, uh, Ron Perlman plays, you know, Hellboy himself plays uh, uh, Sands of Anarchy, Sands of Anarchy, yeah, uh, or uh, Pacific Rim, you know, I love Ron Perlman, he's the best, and uh, he uh, is just this real seedy, evil mobster guy that's just taking advantage of the situation, it's just, it's got to be seen to believe, it's beautifully photographed, and get this, here's the best part, shot directed by Roland Emmerich, the guy who did Godzilla, the guy who did The Day After Tomorrow, and uh, uh, Independence Day and the new Independence Day. Unbelievable. This man just does these huge bigger than life Hollywood blockbusters and he did something as a gay director, as a gay man, did something that just fulfilled his soul. So wonderful direction. I just love the lighting, the characters, and one of the street street hustlers is, uh, I, I'm so sorry, I'm going blank on his name. I didn't write his name out, but he's Banshee from the, from the X-Men. Yeah, so just amazing outstanding performances all around. This is one of my favorite movies of the year. And I even wore my Bernie Sanders button. Yeah, I'm a raging liberal. There it is. And, uh, uh, but this is just one of the best movies of the year. It's definitely in my top five. We're going to see how the rest of the movies play out this year. Uh, it's an important uh, civil rights, you know, chapter 
that I didn't know about. And this movie has got a lot of criticism. We've got to talk about the criticisms here because they're saying that, that they're not portrayed uh, correctly in the movie. But, you know, hey, they had transgender, they had lesbians, they had the whole spectrum, the whole rainbow of gay people in the movie. So I don't know where these criticisms were coming from. As someone who saw the movie just the other day and just, I thought it was wonderfully represented. And I did all this research online to find out exactly what where were the, the, the beefs were with, with Roland Emmerich and all that, but I, I couldn't understand it. I even went to Twitter and said, Roland, Hey, did a great job. I don't understand the criticisms. You did one of the best films of the year. I urge you to open your heart, open your mind, and see this incredible film, and uh, you'll come out changed. You really will. Or with a better perspective, historically, and right here, too. All right. And, by the way, you know, vote for Bernie Sanders. Uh, for more reviews and interviews, just surf on over to my website at VegasFilmCritic.com. Pick up my podcast at iTunes. And if you like what you see, which I know you do, that little V down there, just click on that to subscribe. Also... Comment below and share. I'm Jeffrey K. Howard. That's a thumbs up, by the way. I'll see you next time.